Hey guys, David here and welcome to Digital Outlook. And boy, do we have another amazing show for you today. David Swartz sets the price record straight. So guys, let's get to it. So guys, right now we are experiencing a dip in this entire digital asset space that was absolutely expected. But also expected, of course, is all the fusters. Boy, are they out there. Take a look at XRP. Oh, it's nosediving. Well, guys, the whole market has been going down, including Bitcoin itself. If you were to take a look from where it was to where it is, Guys, these kind of retrenchments in bull markets are expected. Now, something else that has been making its way through the interwebs, of course, has been all this about David Swartz and how, oh, David Swartz has disavowed his prior price predictions for XRP needing to be high and on and on and on. Well, guys, David Swartz himself has come out and set the record straight. Now, just take a look at this article right over here. David Swartz addresses issue with Ripple preferring low XRP price for payment because that's the narrative that has been going around. Well, just listen to this. A community member recently expressed concern over interpretations of Ripple's chief technology officer, David Swartz, past statements. Some community figures believe Swartz previously implied that XRP didn't require a high price for efficient payments. Swartz addressed two key topics, XRP's ideal price point for payment functionality and the potential classification of Ethereum as a security. The CTO sought to dispel a lingering misconception regarding Ripple stance on XRP's price for payment processing. Boy, do we all want to listen to this. He emphasized the illogical nature of the argument suggesting that Ripple prefers a lower XRP price. Absolutely, for sure, guys. Come on. Now, clarifying his position on XRP's price, Swartz acknowledged a 2017 statement where he pointed out XRP's utility in payments renders it unsuitable for being dirt cheap. And listen, here's the quote right here. It can't be dirt cheap. That doesn't make sense. If XRP costs $1, they'd need a million XRP, which would cost $1 million. If XRP costs a million dollars, they would need one XRP, which would again cost $1 million. So basically is what he's saying concerning the supply and the facility that XRP is going to have to absolutely manage, you cannot have a low price for XRP. Now, the Ripple CTO reiterated his belief that a higher price strengthens its practicality in facilitating payments and acting as an intermediary asset. Boom, right there, all the fudsters that have been bringing out that nonsense that David Swartz had disavowed his 2017 statement, absolute baloney, and he himself has come out and really has said it right here. Now, Swartz elaborated, that his past comments aim to counter misconceptions held by some XRP holders. These individuals believe Ripple desired a low XRP price for efficient transactions. Some even harbored theories of Ripple manipulating the price through trading bots. Well, hello, hello, aren't we hearing that again? Swartz dismissed these claims and tagged them as utterly, entirely illogical. Swartz explained that a higher XRP price Price translates to faster transaction settlement times and lower fees within the Ripple Net network. Guys, bang, right there. This efficiency becomes increasingly crucial as transaction volumes scales. Swartz comments on XRP pricing were part of a broader conversation regarding cryptocurrency regulations. A key point of discussion was the potential classification of Ethereum 
as a security by the United States Securities and Exchange Commission. Molly Elmore, Chief Marketing Officer at Val Hill Capital. Boy, I can't wait to share the stage with Molly Elmore at the Quantum Summit that's coming here in June. And by the way, we are going to have an an interview with Mel himself, the organizer of that summit. And it's going to be something else, guys. Lots of people going. Now, She began the discussion with speculations surrounding potential maneuvers by Ethereum founders. She focused on the implications of a security classification for Ethereum, particularly concerning staking. Elmore presented a hypothetical scenario involving Ethereum's transition to a proof-of-stake validation mechanism. She then connected this to the recent launch of BlackRock's first tokenized fund on the Ethereum network. Now, listen to this. Elmore suggested, now this is really kind of interesting what she's saying here, that a strategic link between these two events, which occurred nearly two years apart, she theorized that Ethereum insiders and BlackRock might be attempting to push institutional investors towards Ethereum by classifying ETH at staking as a securities offering. This, in turn, would restrict participation, get this, guys, to accredited investors and institutions. Boy, that is big. With the SEC potentially going after Ethereum, Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse recently asserted that the regulator will lose that fight. I absolutely agree. Why? Because Ethereum is not a security, guys. It does not represent a security. I've heard all the arguments. People say, well... With staking, you can get rewards. Aren't you expecting some return on your on your investment? And da, 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 da. Well, guys, you can put your money into a bank account and expect you know some interest on your savings. That does not make the cash in that account a security, nor does staking your Ethereum and getting some rewards for doing that constitute a security in and of itself. It is a utility token, just like XRP is a utility token, and it functions like that. But of course, the SEC cannot wrap their brain around this entire digital asset space. And you got Bill Hyman came out. Yes, they gave Ethereum a free pass, and we all understand how wrong that was. But the fact of the matter is, it still does not constitute the case that Ethereum is a security any more than XRP is a security. Absolutely agree there. Now, Swartz weighed in on the conversation, expressing his bewilderment regarding the notion of staking as a security. Exactly just what we said. You put your money in the bank, you expect to get some interest for it. And and is that some sort of a security now? No, it is not. He separated the concept of the token itself from the act of staking, emphasizing that staking is a service provided by the system, not a securities transaction. Bingo. Right there, guys. Boy, this was absolutely amazing for David to come out and genuinely clarify that. And he, by the way, is going to be at the XRP Vegas conference. And boy, I sure hope we get to shake hands. I'll tell you what. Now, guys, just listen to this right here. XRP skyrockets 80% in volume amid 400 million crypto bloodbath. Listen to this. XRP eyes meteoric rise in engagement of market participants, but reasons may disappoint. And here we are. We got February, or sorry, I'm February, April 2nd, 2024. Here we go. In an extra volatile period on the crypto market, the trading volume of XRP, a popular cryptocurrency, surged by a staggering 80% within the past 24 hours, soaring to a value surpassing 4 billion dollars now you want to talk about liquidity boom it is right there in this space now coin glass reports that derivatives alone accounted for 2.16 billion while spot markets added an additional 1.9 billion marking a 55.4 percent increase from the previous day despite this substantial uptick the token's market capitalization stands at 32.5 billion translating to a vol a trading volume to market cap ratio of 12 and a half percent signaling active but not extraordinary trading trading sorry however this surge in xrb trading activity occurred amid what can only be described as a crypto bloodbath guys it almost makes me laugh when i hear them say that because what we're talking about here is what 
five to seven percent you know changes there drops guys those are not dips those are that and maybe a dip it's certainly not a bloodbath i've been around guys for the last four years and anybody else that has knows very well we have seen some major major crashes and some major pumps in this market and to use the terminology of bloodbath it's kind of a little overkill in my mind Liquidation statistics reveal that over 400 million worth of positions were forcibly closed with an overwhelming majority, 85.5%, being long positions or purchases. Well, guys, that is the deal when you deal with le le leverage trading. Judy and I do not leverage trade. And the risks that people are taking with their entire portfolios, I actually know people that went out there and did leverage longs, leverage shorts, and got so liquidated they lost their entire portfolio that they took years to build. So Judy and I, we are not out doing that, I'll tell you what. Hey, bears make money, bulls make money, and pigs get slaughtered. That's what they say. Now, the XRP market witnessed an even higher ratio with 94% of liquidated future positions representing long positions totaling 5.47 million. Now, this dramatic increase in trading volume coincides with a sharp decline in XRP prices, triggering stop losses and margin calls that force buyers to hastily exit their positions. Consequently, the trading volume of the token experienced a notable surge, reflective of heightened market activity amid widespread sell-off and liquidations. While the surge in XRP trading volume is undeniably significant, and it is because it's the interest in the asset that we're talking about, guys, whether it's going up or whether it's making downward moves, it is truly something. We are seeing an adoption in this space that is truly wild, and in fact, 87 million ledgers closed. That's what we were reporting last night. And the actual XRP accounts, wow, did it ever increase? We are well over 5 million right now. Now, it's essential to contextualize it with the broader crypto market landscape characterized by extreme and significant losses throughout the whole thing despite the impressive volume figures the market remains turbulent guys you are in for the ride of your life if you're gonna really hang on through an entire bull run judy and i have we know exactly how it feels and it is genuinely a roller coaster ride and i'll tell you it takes nerves of steels and as they say diamond hands with investors navigating through dark waters as they assess the implications of the ongoing bloodbath on on their portfolios and the general crypto market guys just wait two weeks that whole narrative is going to change i've been here to see it many of you have been here to see it haven't they said all that didn't we hear this kind of narrative not too long ago guys this is just absolutely par for the course whenever we see these little dips and people are leveraging and they're gambling really in this market and they get taken down by the market well everyone's you know crying ah, and all this kind of stuff when we know very well where the trajectory of this market is going long term and it wasn't that long ago where people were really even down on Bitcoin and then all of a sudden, boof, guys, way up to provide new all-time highs. Well, this, you know, altcoin space and including XRP, it's my genuine belief. Yes, we may see a correction, but I think we are going to bounce from there and absolutely shoot off into the stratosphere. That is my personal conviction. Now, listen to this right here for Confluence. XRP's next move Analysts I major breakout admits consolidation. Now, XRP's symmetrical triangle pattern suggests an impending breakout after a prolonged consolidation phase. Now, critical support for XRP lies at the 0 0.382 Fibonacci retracement mark, indicating stability amid market fluctuations. Traders and analysts anticipate significant volatility as XRP nears a potential breakout with varied strategies being considered. Market observers are closely watching XRP's trading patterns with Crypto Rover identifying a symmetrical triangle pattern and Egreg Crypto emphasizing its critical support at the 0.382 Fibonacci retracement mark. 
Crypto Rover states that the symmetrical triangle pattern with XRP's price chart indicates a prolonged consolidation phase spanning the past four years, and some guys have said even the past six. Now, this pattern, characterized by converging trend lines, suggests an imminent breakout as it reaches its apex in April of 2024, albeit the direction remains uncertain. Guys, it is going to move. Now, a lot of us look, have been down this road before and we've seen it just tinker along, tinker along just like that. All of a sudden, bang, off she goes now. Listen to this. Renowned crypto analyst E. Greg Crypto asserts that XRP appears to be holding firm at a critical juncture, aligning with the 0.382 Fibonacci retracement mark when analyzed over a weekly time frame. Now, this is what he says. XRP Fib, Point zero point three eight two major support XRP will never close below Fib zero point three eight two on the weekly wicking on the four hour daily as possible, but it has no impact, guys, on the long term trajectory and strength of XRP. And he made that statement just today. He says XRP army stay steady. Now amid the market's ebbs and flows, Egreg Crypto underscores that minor fluctuations observed on shorter intervals like the four hour or daily charts are unlikely to sway xrp's overarching trajectory instead the focus remains on its potential targets notably within the fibonacci retracement levels of 702 and of course 786 with a significant milestone anticipated at the 1.618 Fibonacci level corresponding to $6.40. Anticipation looms among traders and analysts as historical precedent indicates the potential for substantial volatility following a, the symmetrical triangle's culmination. Such volatility can lead to either bullish or bearish outcomes, prompting diverse strategies among market participants from pre-positioning to awaiting confirmation before executing trades. Despite XRP's current price standing at the 59.01 cents, reflecting minor declines over the past day and week, the crypto community remains vigilant. Guys, I'm telling you what, we have been here before and boy, does it ever feel like it did back then and it literally was shooting off it changed our world now look at when you think of you seeing this kind of trading volume guys what it's telling you is there's big time interest in this space and you even got david swartz out there himself saying listen guys no way did I disavow what I believe about XRP needing a high price to actually make it genuinely functional the way in which it was designed to. Guys, I'm telling you what. Yes, we're going through some volatile waters right now, to be sure. But my confidence in this asset hasn't changed. And that's why I would say get out there. Really research it for yourself. And listen, if you're out there and you're getting way stressed out about this, then you need to evaluate, hey, the effects on your health. But guys, I'll tell you what, for Judy and I, we are just as bullish as we ever have been for the long-term prospects of what SXRP does, what XRP will do, what it represents for the future. Guys, buckle up because this one's going to be the ride of your life. So guys, one of the best decisions that Judy and I made in that last bull run is that we got our plan in place before it absolutely took off. And what our coaching program offers, that is where you and I can meet personally one-on-one -on -one for one hour over Zoom. And during that time, I share with you our personal journey in that last bull run and what enabled Judy and I to experience some amazing amazing financial success. I share with you the mistakes we made so that you don't have to fall into the same pitfalls we did. We take a look at your portfolio and make sure that it's balanced towards your goals and we work together to develop your exit strategy. We can even get your assets off an exchange and onto a hardware wallet along with delivering to you some amazing techniques that are really going to help you in this space. Now, the cost of that is $250, and if that's something that interests you, you write me right there at coaching at the digitaloutlook.com, and we'll get you all booked in. 
So guys, I truly hope that you enjoyed today's video. And as always, it's not financial advice. It's just my two cents. Hit the like and subscribe. Drop your comments down in the comment section and I'll catch you in the next one.